it was progressing, the disease, as we call it, uh, in the 12-step realm. It was like, when Lynn died especially, it fueled even more justification for self-destruction. Mm-hmm. Really? It, it definitely, I went, I, I, I like went in. I feel like it can go one way or the other. Mm. It could be one way like, okay, wake up, call, I'm not doing this anymore. Right. Or just self-destruct, three, yeah. two, one, blast off. Yeah, yeah. dude, and I think it depends on where someone is mm-hmm. at the time that the thing happens. Mm-hmm. So where I was at that time, so imagine this, I mean, we're, I got a lot of, I, there's, I have so much like experience that I'm aware of that I can remember these things and right. I go, wow, ting, ting, ting. But I had moved to California and I really delved into addiction, man. I, I, I was, I'm powerless over drugs and alcohol. Once it's in my body, I'm not in control Maybe I won't go on to the bitter end. Maybe I will, but it's not my choice. Um, sometimes I would stop because it would get a little whatever. But then eventually, if I wasn't, you know, I, I really, I'm a 12-step guy. And if I wasn't treating the spiritual aspect of me, then I was going to reach for it. If I didn't have something else to help me go through life, um, I was going to reach for the drug or the drink. Mm-hmm. And it was only a matter of time. And so when I got out to California, when I got to Santa Barbara, it was like paradise, man. Mm-hmm. Santa Barbara was a, like a... There's college there. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Every day is like Groundhog Day. It's like it's gorgeous. And um, so it was like the land of milk and honey, right? And there's wheat, and the weed is 10 times better, mm-hmm. or was 10 times better than the weed from Virginia. There's no seeds. Right. I was shocked the first time. Somebody's like, yeah, it's, I don't know what the price cost is now, but in 1995, they were like, I'm like, I was like, let me get an eighth. And they're like, 60 bucks. I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? And, and then those dudes had to be like, bro, watch. And then I, and it was just, just, spongy no seeds just oh sticky icky i was like oh my lord uh, make that a quarter <laughs> you know, i got a buck 20 you know like it was just like whoa my god and so i was j- diving in i get it. that's when i kind of got introduced to meth now the crazy thing is now i was in treatment when i was 16 years old so yeah. 1987 i was in treatment mm. right so i had already had some experience with and i you know knew that that I, you know, had right. issues that mm-hmm. I knew that I liked. I always do these air quotes because I don't really, I, ultimately I didn't like crystal meth, but I couldn't stop doing it mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> when it came yeah. down to it. Yeah, <clears throat> made you that's, tweakerish. What didn't you like about it? I just did, I mean, that my teeth were falling out, that I would, yeah. what I would do is I would, uh, I would like not eat, not drink, totally cave in, right, right. Uh, sexual deviancy, um, I would push everybody away and then blame them for abandoning me. Right. Right. And that kind of stuff. And it was awful. And I was such a tweaker at the end, literally two weeks after 9 11, a month after 9 11, right before the shoe bomber guy was, was uh, found. Yeah. I smoked crystal meth in the bathroom on an international flight. Wow. Up, torch, pipe. In, I had the pipe in my boot and I faked like a limp. And I had a pipe. I mean, if anybody doesn't know what a pookie is, they call it a pookie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, had, I had it in my boot. If I if I had snapped that thing while I was walking. I'm surprised you didn't. Jesus. Because the pookie, they got that fat ball at the end. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, imagine. A, and then yeah. I'm, and I got glass shards and meth shards on my feet, my foot. So I didn't. And I made it on the plane. And I went in the bathroom. And I'm smoking meth. Look, literally looking at the smoke detector going, what am I doing? Yeah. What am I doing? Yeah. Now, see, that's where I say. I'm, I wasn't doing that because I liked it. That's what I mean when I say I didn't right. like it. Right. I didn't like that. I would not have chosen to do that. I was a slave. Mm-hmm. That's beyond my thinking. It wasn't me going, I'm, I can get away with this. It was me going, oh my God, what the f- am I doing? What am I? And I'm looking at the smoke detector. And then I had some stroke of genius and I hit the, the flush and the plunger for the uh, thing and slowly blew it into the thing so it sucked uh, it yeah. and the air sucked down. I flushed the toilet like five times. It's like I had to do in prison. Is that how you had to roll? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blow it in the toilet and flush the toilet. That's exactly, yeah, yeah. okay, so I would have been done fine. I wasn't in prison. I just watched a lot of 60 Days. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he just, swears he wasn't. I just, yeah, just yeah. FYI. Yeah, I didn't even know that was a thing until that yeah. very moment. Mm-hmm. You know, necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah, man. <laughs> so that's what I mean when I didn't want to say I didn't like it. Now, again, going back into my life, when I was a kid... I'm jumping all over the place. I tend to do that. That's totally cool. When I was, was going to ask you about childhood. Yeah. What, because we started talking about snot right away, so we kind of dropped into 1995. But when I was a kid, man, I you know I share this regularly because it's true for me. There, I had these these like tendencies to be a little depressive, yet super like extroverted at times. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I might call it manic depression, but I'm not clinically manic depressive. 
but um, I would have these thoughts of like, if the three of us were friends, the two of you were closer friends with each other than either of you were with me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm out here, and like, she doesn't want to talk to me, I suck on guitar, I can't dance, right? Yeah. And then I like had a drink or, you know, smoke some weed, and I'd be like, oh man, I'm so creative, dude. Mm -hmm. I'm so Oh, bro, we're tight. Hey, we're all three, man. We're fuck, three amigos, right? Right. And then I'm, I can, oh, I can dance, right? And she does want to talk to me. What's up, girl? You know, like it would do oh, this yeah. thing for me. It changed me here in my in here. Yeah. What I didn't realize was happening happening concurrently, if you will, is that because of whatever DNA, I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but in this body and mind is the condition that we refer to as alcoholism, which in my experience. In, again, in this body, encompasses addiction as part of it. I just call it alcoholism because that's what we say in, in AA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I just refer to it as alcoholism, but I'm referring to pretty much any mind-altering substance that I did mm -hmm. um, what it, that had an effect on me. Yeah. I was, I'm pretty much not in charge of what happens next.